welcome back. Uh, so, last class we defined some important concepts, right? We defined sigma algebra of events and we define measures in general and we also define probability measures as special cases of measures, right? Uh, so, the sigma algebra uh, of events uh, essentially consists of those uh, certain subsets which are closed under complementation, countable union and countable intersections, right? And, and it must contain the null set, right? And elements of the sigma algebra, as is elements of the sigma algebra f are known as events, right? And then uh, once you have the sigma algebra, we defined measures on this measurable space omega f and we said measures satisfy two properties. One is that the measure of the null set must be 0, the second is that countable additivity of measures, right. If you have disjoint sets in f and count so the measure of the countable union must be equal to sum of the individual measures. Now and then uh, we, we also said that the measure is a probability measure if the measure of omega itself is 1, right. So, probability measures have three properties p of null set is equal to 0, p of omega equal to 1 and they satisfy and probability measures satisfy countable additivity of disjoint uh, events, all right. Okay, today we will derive uh, using uh, these three axioms of probability that I just mentioned, we will derive some fundamental properties of probability measures, okay. So, the first property, so here, so as usual, omega f p is a probability space and all probability space satisfy the following properties, all probability measures follow, satisfy the following properties, p of a complement is equal to 1 minus p of a right for all events probability of a complement is 1 minus probability of a okay how does this follow how do you prove this you have to use only the axioms remember a and a complement are disjoint, right? Right, right. A union, a complement is omega, right? So, uh, omega is equal to uh, a union, a complement. So, probability of omega is, is equal to one is equal to probability of a complement union a. Probability of a com y. Because countable additivity of see the thing is there is okay let me just put down uh, just to make this clear so there is also um, this is the simplest property uh, this generalizes to what is known as finite additivity okay it's actually fairly trivial if you have countable additivity it's very trivially follows that you have a finite additivity so if if a one a two dot 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 a n are events then and disjoint suppose they are disjoint then probability of union uh, i equals 1 through n a i is equal to sum over probability of a i i equals 1 through n okay so actually this is a special case of this isn't it right so you have uh, only a and a complement and it so happens that a union a complement is omega right so if you apply this property 
uh, you will get this very trivially right i put this down first because it's so simple but actually is a special case of uh, it this follows from this which is finite uh, additivity of probability measures now how do you how do you prove this we know that probability measures are countably additive right but you have to prove now that they are finitely additive it's actually quite trivial but you have to do it properly right ha huh, so after an you choose all those events as null sets okay so then you will have union so after all these guys you there are there are only null sets right so you can prove that uh, union i equal to 1 to infinity ai is equal to union i equal to 1 to n ai because an plus 1 an plus 2 they are all null sets and then what do you do here on the right on the right hand side ha huh. so you will have sum over i equal to 1 to infinity uh, probability of ai so the first n terms are whatever they are but after that you will have probability of null set is zero right but now there is a problem so you are so essentially what you have here after this is right the, the ghost term so to speak is uh, i equals n plus 1 to infinity probability of null right that's what is on the if if you i mean so i guess what i'm saying is if you have i equal to 1 to infinity union here and you put uh, n plus a n plus 1 onwards as infinity uh, or as null sets you have this remaining now how do you prove that this is zero you are summing an infinite number of zeros right so after all okay so after all what is the summation defined as the summation is defined as limit m tending to infinity i equals n plus 1 to m of whatever it is right but all these finite summations are zero so limit of the sequence which is zero always is zero right so this should be written as a limit so in order to do it properly do it fully rigorously you have to write this out as a limit then prove it okay so you should not get confused saying oh this is infinity this is zero so zero times infinity i don't know what to do right that's not right so you have to do it carefully so i mean so let me get rid of this so this is the actual result i just spoke out how you prove this right i suggest you actually write it down for uh, your own clarity okay so these two are very easy right it's just finite derivative and disjointness any questions okay so if you have two events a and b both uh, in the sigma algebra and if one of them is contained in the other then the probability of a is less than or equal to the probability of b okay how do you prove that It seems perfectly reasonable right ah right so you can write b as uh, a union b minus a correct uh, now a and b minus a are this joint so you can use finite additivity right 
So, you can use finite additivity to write probability of B is equal to probability of A plus probability of B minus A, right. Now, this is non negative, why? Probabilities are non negative, right? They go from 0 to 1. So, that guy is non negative. So, you have that this is bigger than or equal to that. Yeah, so we, we already said that probability is a map from f to 0 1, right? Cl closed interval 0 1, right? So, the it only takes values in the range 0 and 1, right? So, that is a part of the axiom, right? So, this is non negative and therefore, we have it. A and B belong to the sigma algebra. You will prove it in your homework, all right? After all, what is, I mean, come to think of it, what is B minus A, right? It is B intersection, A complement. So, there you have it, right? Any questions? So, these are very simple properties. And the related property, the probability of again all this, I am not going to write this again and again, ok. So, uh, maybe once I will write it A is an F, B is an F, uh, then probability of A union B is equal to <coughs> probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B. Okay. So, this is saying that probability of A union B, you, you can add the two probabilities and subtract the probability of the intersection and of course, A intersection B is also an element of F, right. How would you prove this? Yeah, you just do it. Okay, it's fairly simple. Just try and do it as an exercise. Okay, proof exercise. It's fairly simple, right? Write out. Uh, I think you essentially you are over counting a intersection b, right? So you have to have to subtract that out. Proof is an exercise. So a generalization. So more generally. If a one, a two, dot dot dot, a n uh, belong to F, then probability of union i equals one through n a i is equal to sum over probability of a i minus sum over i less than j probability of a i intersection a j plus sum over i less than j less than k probability of a i intersection a j k my dot 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 minus 1 to the minus 1 to the n minus 1, n or n minus 1, n minus 1 I think, the n minus 1 probability of intersection So, this generalizes to more events, right. So, what we are talking about now is, see when you had uh, when you had disjoint events, of course, we said that probability of A union B is probability of A plus probability of B. Now, we are saying that if they are not necessarily disjoint, then the union you have to take out some 
you are over if you just add their probabilities you are over counting. So, you took out the intersection b. Uh, so, here this is similar. So, you are adding all the probabilities taking out all the pairwise intersections now then you take out too much. So, you add back three way intersections and so on right. So, this uh, rule is called the in inclusion exclusion rule right it has a name inclusion exclusion rule or inclusion exclusion formula because you keep including more you excluding some right. So, if you had probability of A union B union C you will have some of the three probabilities subtract three choose two <coughs> intersection terms and add the three way intersections right. So, that is how you would do it. How will you prove something like this? Induction. Induction. Right, because it is a statement on the natural numbers, right. This is this is for any n, right. This is only a finite number of events, right. So, you proved it, you proved it for the case n equal to 2 by elementary methods. Assume that this is true for n is equal to k, right, and then prove it for k plus 1, right. So, it is fairly easy to prove by induction. using induction on n, but it is not a pretty proof it is some ugly proof right you have to write out the induction induction hypothesis the basic uh, base case is easy uh, n equal to 2 you have it write out the base case for k and you know you have to work through all the algebra to prove this right it is just messy. Uh, there is a uh, much simpler proof using indicator random variables which we will study much later ok. This is this is how you should prove it now ok to appreciate how much easier it is, it is to prove it using the the method we will study halfway down the course ok. So, far ok. So, these are all very elementary prob properties of probability measures uh, I assume more, most of you know this already right this is all stuff you have seen I think. Okay, so I so this I put down some four prob pro properties. Uh, the remaining ones are more advanced. Okay, so these are very simple. What are what is going to come is more advanced. You have to be slightly uh, careful in proving this. Property number five. if a 1, a 2, a 3 dot 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 are in f, then So, this is a very important property ok. Uh, this says that so, you have a countable set of events all right a 1 a 2 dot 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 it is a countable collection of events and of course, the countable union is also an f right because f is a sigma algebra right. So, this is well defined. So, we are saying that the probability of a countably infinite union is the limit of the probability of an even this countably this finite union right. So, what is on the left is the probability of a uh, this is the probability of a countably infinite union and you have here a finite union and a limit right and we are saying that these two are equal ok. So, it looks as though there is nothing to prove right it looks like. So, what you are doing is like you are in very informal terms you are just taking the limit inside right. So, in that sense it looks like, so this property is known as continuity of probabilities ok. Continuity of probability measure that is what this prob property is called 
uh, for obvious reasons right this looks as though you are simply so if you had a if you have a continuous function you take the limit inside the function right this looks as though you can just take the limit inside right that is why this is called the continuity of prob probability measures. This is a highly non trivial statement ok this is by no means obvious actually it takes some serious thinking to even understand what this property means. Um, let me explain. So, first of all I told you that this kind of a union countably infinite union should not be thought of as a sequential operation it is not like unioning you know it is not like you are unioning a 1 with u to a 2 then a 3 then a 4 and so on that is not the way to look at this right I this is there in the I think I made a remark in the set theory notes right this should what is this set of all omegas in at least one of the a i's. So, please do not look at this as a some kind of a limiting version of some finite union right after all right I mean what is the limit of a set there is no such thing as we know limit of numbers right. So, this is not like you cannot say oh this set is like the limit of that union or something like that there is no meaning to that right that is the first clarification I want to give right. So, this is the set of all omegas in at least one of the a i's uh, and this is the set of all omegas in a 1 through a m at least one of the a 1 through a m's and so that is the probability. So, you can look at uh, so, you can look at let us say this as a function of this will be some call this some p m right this is these are numbers that depend on m right you are unioning the first m right. So, this p m s are so I claim that this p m s are monotonically increasing in m that is clear why a m is contained in so uh, well ok this union is contained in the m plus 1 union right. So, you can say that this p m s are monotonically increasing sequence right the limit of a monotonically increasing sequence has to exist right it has to converge. So, this right hand limit exists as some real number right and left hand of course, is well defined right it is some probability of this countable union countably infinite union which we know exists because this guy is a element of the sigma algebra. So, this must be well defined. So, this property is saying that this number which is well defined is equal to some other limit which is also well defined right and but it is by no means obvious why they are equal ok in particular it is not like you are taking the limit inside it looks like it, but it is not that ok yes. Yes, it uh, well no 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 yeah. So, this is correct. So, this is a monotonically increasing sequence. So, it has to converge right right it has to converge to something right it has to converge to either a real number or plus infinity right. So, this p m exists this p m is well defined right I am saying that this limit is equal to another entity which is well defined right now it is another probability right. So, in particular see if you look at these p m s they are after all bounded above by 1 right. So, in this in this particular case they are just probabilities right. So, it will be bounded above n. So, it has to converge it cannot converge to plus infinity right. So, if these were ordinary measures this is still true except that this limit may not be finite it may be plus infinity right correct. Okay, so, is the statement at least clear the proof is non trivial, but is the statement clear ok. So, this do not take this lightly this is not a simple this is not a simple assertion right this is by no means an obvious uh, property at all. No, no, no. Have I said that? No, then it, they do not need to be, right. 
Any other questions? Okay, let us prove this. So, let us prove ok, I am trying to prove this now, proof uh, define uh, B ok, let us do this define B 1 is equal to A 1, B 2 is equal to A 2 minus A 1 and so on right. So, that B, uh, so that B n is equal to a n minus, uh, so A n minus union A i, i equals 1 through n minus 1 okay, and so on right. So, I am defining, uh, so I have these A i's, this is a countable collection of events. So, I am defining another countable collection of events. Uh, namely B i's ok. So, I do that. So, I keep A 1 B 1 as A 1 then B 2 I define as A 2 minus A 1 B 3 will be A 3 minus A 1 union A 2 right and so on right. This is another countable sequence of events ok. Uh, now, what can be shown? So, this is a very important step ok. This is a very important step in the construction. So, what you can show is that claim B i's are this joint. I e B i intersection B j equal to null for all i comma j greater than or equal to one. Okay. So, it looks intuitively obvious right, except you have to prove it ok. That is a homework ok. Proving this claim is a let, let me call this claim 1 ok. This claim 1 proving claim 1 is a homework. Uh, it is simple enough, but uh, you have to be careful you have to do it properly ok. Uh, it is not difficult. So, you start off by assuming without loss of generality is uh, that j is bigger than i ok. I give you a hint assume j is bigger than i and you can prove it by contradiction assume that there is a common element to i and j and arrive at a contradiction. Okay, this is one claim. The other claim is the following. I am claiming that union i equals 1 to infinity. Well, I equal to 1 to infinity or uh, so I so I want to claim that union i equals 1 to infinity a i equals union i equals 1 to infinity b i. Okay. This also you will prove. Okay. So, how will you prove that these two sets are equal?
ha huh. correct so if whenever you have to prove two sets are equal you have to say that any element in this union is also in this union and vice versa right so if any omega is an element of at least one of the ais it must be an element of at least one of the bis and vice versa right you prove that you are done okay and so i think you can also prove and you can prove that the finite unions are also that's also true okay so what is this union this is the union of events in a1 through a this is the union of elements in a1 through a am and similarly for this you have to prove that this is contained in that and that is contained in this okay so these are all simple exercises you will do okay there's nothing very great about this but you these are like lemmas in proving this result okay claims now we can prove it i think ha huh, now we are ready because i can write so this is what i want right on the left hand side i have probability of that guy right now that is equal to probability of this union now why is this union much better than that these guys are disjoint b is a disjoint a is maybe very complicated right they may all be intersecting in very complicated ways but b is a disjoint so i can use what property sorry countability right so let's do this now probability of union i equals 1 through infinity ai is equal to probability of union i equals 1 through infinity bi that's because these two are equal and this will be equal to sum over i equals 1 through infinity probability of bi correct everybody okay this is because of bi is a disjoint and countable additivity of probabilities right so now so i i am now in a good situation where i have so i had this probability of this countably infinite union now i wrote it as a summation now this infinite summations are in fact just limits of finite summations see these countably infinite unions are not limits of finite unions that's not true but summations this infinite summation is limit of a finite summation right so this i can write as limit m going to infinity i equals 1 through m p b i correct everybody happy this is by just by definition of this summation okay now again what will i do this i can use finite additivity right so now i can write this as limit see after all i want to maintain limit on the right right so i brought out a limit on the right so uh, so i should maintain that limit right i should not get rid of it so i should maintain that limit and then i will write this as probability union i equals 1 to m bi which is equal to yeah so because of this right which is equal to limit m tending to infinity probability of union i equals 1 through m ai okay so this is a fairly non trivial uh, proof right so you have to be very careful so this is by claim 2 right this equality is by claim 2 this equality is by uh finite additivity right uh this is by definition by definition of the infinite sum right and this equality is by 
axiom right the axiom of countable this is by uh, countable relativity that is by countable relativity and that is by claim 1 claim 2. So, this is by countable relativity and claim 1 right clear. So, this is something we will use repeatedly ok this continuity of probability measures is this is a non trivial property, but from now on we will be like happily taking the limit inside ok. It is as though we are taking the limit inside, but there is some serious proof involved correct. Any questions? Okay. Uh, so, I will now state two more properties which are in fact corollaries of uh, this uh, continuity of probabilities theorem, but uh, it they are also important in their own right. So, I am not going to I am going to state them explicitly. Okay. This is property number 6 right. if a 1 a 2 or a dot are nested increasing events i e a 1 contained in a 2 is contained in a 3 is contained in and so on. Then probability of union i equals 1 through infinity a i is equal to Uh, limit m tending to infinity probability of a m. See this nested increasing even means so a 1 then a 2 is bigger than that then a 3 is bigger than it contains uh, a 2 and so on right. So, there is this nested sequence of containments if you have this situation then this is actually nothing but a very easy corollary to the previous result. So, in the situation we have uh, union i equal to 1 through m a i will simply be a m because a m is the biggest guy right and this other guys are all smaller they are all contained in them right fine. So, this is a very trivial corollary. So, limit m tending to infinity this term simply becomes probability of a m right this finite union is equal to a m right very easy corollary. Any questions? And similarly, so for intersection you get a similar result which is probably most useful. So, I will also state that explicitly property number 7 if a 1 a 2 dot 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 are nested decreasing i e uh, a 1 contains 
a 2 contains a 3 dot dot dot. Okay. So, these guys are now nesting in right. So, a n is contained in a n plus 1 or they say it the other way a n plus 1 is contained in a n right. So, that is this. Then Uh, probability intersection i equals 1 through infinity a i equals any guesses limit m tending to infinity probability of a m. How do you prove that? Intersection will be sorry, sorry. So, I want to prove this result. How do you prove it? Intersection of A1 to A M will be A M. Intersection of A1 through A M will be A M, right? That much is clear, right? Because of this containment. Uh, then what? Actually, you can do that too, right? You can you have to see you have you are dealing with uh, intersection now. So, you have to do what? Somewhere you have to do De Morgan, right? You've been going from union to intersection. You have to do a De Morgan. Actually, do a De Morgan on this. This result you know. You do a De Morgan on this. What do you get? A one complement will contain A two complement. See, if A ones are nested increasing, then the complements are nested decreasing, right? So use that property and use De Morgan. You will get it. Okay. Fine. So these are actually fairly simple corollaries of. Uh, the continuity of probabilities. So actually, this form is probably the most useful. Okay, where you have this decreasing sets, right? These nested decreasing sets, which are contained in with one within another, and this is a countably infinite sequence of nested sets, right? So these sets are the so colloquially they are called Russian dolls. Okay, so have you seen Russian dolls? They are actually dolls. You open one doll, there will be another doll open, another, like they have this bunch of dolls inside one another, right? This is like that, right? Except there is an infinity of them, okay? So, these are these kind of nested decreasing sets are called Russian dolls, okay? That is, and then you have this property for Russian dolls, okay? Okay, any questions? The next property is property number 8. Is an important property called the union bound. Says that if a one, a two dot dot are events, then probability union i equals one through infinity a i is less than or equal to sum over the probability of AIs. Okay. So, this is an important property that says if you have any arbitrary sequence of events, then the probability of the union is less than or equal to the sum of the individual probabilities. All right. So, they essentially this says that, so in, in adding up all these probabilities, you are over counting. Right, so this so this says that this will be bigger than this. Okay, so if A is a disjoint, of course, we know from the axioms that equality holds. But if A is are not necessarily disjoint, then the probability of the union, countable union, is less than or equal to the sum of the individual probabilities. Okay, this is always true, but note that what is on the left hand side is a probability. Whereas, what is on the right hand side may be something bigger than 1, right? this is just a summation, right? This is a summation of non negative numbers, this may in fact be infinity right? or it may be some number bigger than 1. 
So, this is always true, but it is useful only when the right hand side is less than 1. Okay. So, the way to prove this is to just again go back to your B i's. So, remember we defined B i as A i minus union uh, j equals 1 through i minus 1 a j right. And we know from our earlier claims that union of a i's is equal to the union of b i's right. So, I can take the left hand side and say that probability of probability of what is on the left hand side is, is equal to the probability of union i equals 1 through infinity b i's. But by construction we also argued that b i's are in fact disjoint right. So, this is a countable union of disjoint events right. So, this will be equal to sum over i equal to 1 to infinity probability of b i. So, this is because of countable additivity of probability measures right b i s are disjoint. Now, notice that b i s are so for every i b i is contained in a i right that is because b i is defined as a i and then you remove something right. So, this b i for every i b i is contained in a i right which means that probability of b i is less than or equal to probability of a i for all i for all i which means that sum over i equals 1 through n probability of b i is less than or equal to sum over i equals 1 through n probability of a i for all n correct for all n greater than or equal to 1. Therefore, by now you send limit n tending to infinity you will get that this summation here is less than or equal to the then you will get the this infinite summation probability of a i. Okay. So, the, that gives us the proof of the gives us a proof of the union bound. Now, so a remark on the converse. So, you know that if a i s are disjoint this equality necessarily holds right the union bound holds with a equality if a i s are disjoint. However, it is not quite true that if equality holds for certain events it is not necessarily the case that a i s are disjoint. Okay. So, what you can show is that if equality holds in the union bound then the intersections between a i and a j will have 0 probability measure. Okay. It is not quite true that they do not have any elements in common they may have elements in common which have 0 probability measure. Okay. So, the converse of the union bound is not completely it is not quite true. Okay. So, the union bound is used in several applications. Uh, so, we will see an application in the Borel cantilever lemma but also in uh, digital communications if you are transmitting a set of bits uh, the probability of let us say a i is the probability of the ith bit going wrong for example. Uh, you bound the probability of making some error at all by adding up the probability of each bit being decoded incorrectly and uh, if this decode this each each of these probability is small enough this union bound can actually give you a quite a un useful estimate in digital communications okay? and it has several other uses as well. Thanks. <laughs>